Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we'll be looking at endospore staining. I do have a video on what are endospores, what's their structure. If you're interested in that, be sure to check that out. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Let's jump straight into the video. Endospore staining. It's a differential stain. It's a technique that is used to identify bacterial spores or endospores. Both words are used interchangeably, but both mean the same. Spores are stained with Schaeffer Fulton method. This method uses malachite green as a primary stain. And this malachite green stains all the spores green, while the vegetative cells are pink. The reason is the counter stain saffronine that stains all the vegetative cells pink or red. As you can see there, these green dots are the endospores while this pink background is vegetative cells. Lecture outline, we're done with the introduction of the endospore staining. Now we'll be looking at a little review of endospores and its structure so that we can know how the endospore is stained. Then I'll tell you what's important to note prior to starting the staining. Then we'll discuss the equipment and chemicals required for the staining and what's its procedure. And at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Endospores are formed by bacteria in unfavorable conditions like desiccation, food scarcity, temperature extremes. Endospore is the resting dormant state. It means that bacteria can live in it for centuries and whenever the spore will find the favorable conditions, it will convert back into bacteria. If you want to know more about the endospore life cycle, I do have a detailed video on that. Be sure to check it out. Endospores are multi-shelled, as you can see there, protective and resistant structures. That's why they are formed in unfavorable conditions. Only some gram-positive bacteria can form spores like Clostridium and Bacillus. But gram-negative bacteria never make spores. So I've got a really connecting kind of mnemonic there that's negative, this one, and never, this one. As you can see, these are the endospores. This is microscopic picture of endospores. They're round, bright, refractile structures. Structure. Endospore has got its DNA, this one. This is the complete copy. And it is densely packed in a coat that is this outer protein coat that's keratin-like. And some endospores have exosporium on the outer layer. Endospore has got two peptidoglycan layers these ones. It has got inner and outer membranes. Its DNA and cytoplasm make up the core. So what's the cortex? It's anything between the core and the outer membrane. So anything between is the two peptidoglycan layers, right? The important things that we need to know prior to doing staining are that endospore is made to survive in harsh environments like desiccation, food scarcity, very high, very low temperatures, presence of certain chemicals like disinfectants. That's why they're so strong and they've got an impermeable composition of their coat. And there's an exosporium, definitely. So both these things make the staining of endospore difficult. So what to do then? We'll need a staining method that will have a stain that can penetrate a wall thickness of spore. That is Schaeffer Fulton method. Equipment required. Definitely, we'll need a microscope and microscopic slide to put a sample on it. We'll need a paper towel or bloating paper. We'll need a heat burner. We'll need a dropper, beaker, forceps to lift the hot slide from the water bath. Definitely, we'll need the water bath and we'll also need the staining rack that we'll put on the water bath while staining. Chemicals required. We'll need malachite green, that's the primary stain that is used in Schaeffer Fulton method. It will stain the vegetative cells and endospore green. We'll also need saffronin, that is counter or secondary stain. It will stain vegetative cells pink while endospores will remain green. We'll need distilled water that acts as a decolorizer that takes off the color from the vegetative cells making them colorless and endospores will be green. We'll also need steam that will act as a mordant. What's the mordant? 
It's a chemical that enhances the binding of a dye or a stain to specimen, making the color more intense and permanent. We use that in the second step when we apply malachite green to give the endospores the green color. We'll definitely need our specimen. That's the endospores of bacteria. Which bacteria? Definitely the Clostridium and Bacillus, because they're responsible for producing endospores. Steam. Okay, you forgot to tell one thing, that steam will keep the vegetative cells and the endospores green, because it's going to fix the malachite green stain. Procedure. We've got following six steps to stain the endospores. The first one is smearing on slide and heat fixing. The second one is adding primary stain that is malachite green. The third one is steaming to fix the stain. The fourth one is decolorizing and we'll use distilled water for that purpose. And the fifth one is counter staining. We'll use saffronine as a counter stain. And the last one is microscopy to visualize the specimen. Let's discuss each step in detail. Step number one, smearing on slide and heat fixing. We'll use an antiseptic technique to prepare the organisms or the endospore smear by air drying and then heat fixing it on a clear microscopic slide just like that and then we'll put a paper towel on the slide. The reason of putting the paper towel is that it will absorb excess liquid, it will help in drying, it will help us handle the slide properly and we'll also be able to prevent the contamination. Then we'll prepare the water bath and we'll put the slide on the staining rack or the bath. Here comes the second step adding primary stain that is malachite green we'll saturate the paper towel by applying malachite green and we'll leave it for five minutes step number three is steaming as we've put the slide on the water bath we'll turn on the burner i've got a water bucket right there to make, to make the staining process a little more easy for you to memorize we'll heat that bucket i mean the water bath up to steam the slide and we'll steam it for five to seven minutes and it will act as a mordant. As I told you that mordant will do what? It will enhance the binding of a dye or stain. Then it will remove the slide from water bath with the help of forceps because the slide is hot and then we'll allow it to cool for two minutes. Step number four, decolorizing. We'll use distilled water for that purpose. Now we'll rinse the slide with distilled water to remove malachite green because it's water soluble. All the vegetative cells will become colorless because they didn't retain the dye in them. But the endospores did. They are now green colored dots as you can see there. Step number five, counter staining. We will use saffronine for that purpose. We'll now counter stain the slide with saffronine for one to two minutes. Just like that. It will stain all the colorless vegetative cells pink or red. Now Endospores are appearing as green dots, while the vegetative cells are appearing as pink. Step number six, that's the last step. We'll rinse the slide again with distilled water and we'll blot dry both the sides of the slide. What does the blot dry mean? It means to gently remove excess moisture or liquid from surface by using any absorbent like paper towel. After drying, We'll visualize the slide under microscope. Using oil immersion objective, we'll go for 100x, means 100 times magnification. Spore will appear as green dots, just like that, and vegetative cells will appear either red or pink colored, just like that. Alright guys, let's review everything really quick. Step number one, we'll smear everything, mean our sample on the slide. We'll put paper towel for the purpose of absorbing excess liquid, drawing, handling the specimen properly and preventing contamination. Then we'll saturate the paper towel with malachite green and we'll leave it for five minutes and then we'll steam it to use the steam as a mordant that will fix the dye. Then we'll rinse it with water and water will act as a decolorizer that will take up the color from vegetative cells, making them colorless while the endospores are still green. Then we'll add saffronine as a counter stain. It will stain all the vegetative cells pink while the endospores are still green. Then we'll again add water and we'll directly go for microscopy. We'll see that vegetative cells are pink or red sometimes and endospores are appearing as green dots. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. 
And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, Twitter, and I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.